Hey friends, thank you for tuning in to the Occlusal Table, where we bridge dentistry with business, culture, and current events. I'm your host, Taylor Jackson, and today we have Julius Henderson, who will discuss his medical school journey and give advice to those pursuing medicine. Let's get started. Um, so, how you doing? Um, my name is Julius Henderson. I am soon to be Dr. Henderson. I'm a fourth year medical student, um, originally from Chicago, uh, born and raised. And now I go to Meharry Medical College where you know I'm in my last year, really excited um, for the future. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Julius, for being here. Class of 22 in the building. Yeah, yeah excited, <laughs> excited. Very much Ooh, so. Finish line is near. So what drew you into medicine in the first place? Yeah, so, you know, that's, that's a great question. And, um, you know, I always try to, you know, be reflective. And, you know, I'm really appreciative of, you know, my parents and, you know, opportunities um, that they put me in, you know, especially, you know, at a young age, they kind of put me in like, I guess you can call it like a, like a summer camp when I was like, you know, in seventh grade. And that really was kind of like the first time I was exposed to like, like science and kind of like, you know, medicine and stuff like that. Um, you know, kind of fast forward, I was able to be involved in, you know, different things that kept me like, so around medicine and things like that. And, um, you know, I was able to make some really great friends from that program that I still keep to this day. But, you know, going forward, it allowed me to, you know, really, you know, be able to use the things that I've learned. And, you know, I guess as far as, you know, the human body, you know, it's always been something that's fascinated me and how amazing it is. I think the ability to impact it and learn about it is something that, you know, gives me a special skill set. And, you know, even the time after I was in college, you know, I was able to learn that, you know, I really like being around people and, you know, building relationships with people. And I guess that's kind of what the medicine, the, what the field, you know, really allows me um, to do, you know. So with medicine, um, you know, you guys have to take the MCAT in order to get to where you are and we yes, have to take the yes. GAT. Yes. Um, but how do you think is the best way to prepare for the MCAT? Like I know there's a lot of preparation that goes into taking that test. Yeah, no, you are very correct. And, you know, I guess the one thing I would say about the MCAT, you know, because it's very easy to, you know, kind of make it out to be, you know, you know, it is an extremely important test, but what I would say about any, you know, major exam or test or anything is, you know, don't give it as much power as you think it deserves, you know, and I think ultimately, you know, you really want to have a plan. So for myself, I really thought in terms of, you know, obviously there's a lot of things and content that you have to review and you want to make sure that you're taking the time to review uh, the concepts that, are going to help you be successful but um really i think you should invest in you know being able to look at test taking and you know definitely different strategies that are going to help you on the actual day of the test you know when you're in an environment you know that you know it's kind of seems like a high stakes type of environment you really want to have practiced those scenarios and i think what helped me um, especially in medical school was, you know, practicing, putting myself in the environment, in the test environment that, you know, you will eventually be in. And also, I think what's really underappreciated is, you know, taking care of your body as well, and how that really affects your ability to study and be on top of your game. Um, I think, you know, things like, what you're eating, you know, how much sleep you're getting, if, you know, taking care of, you know, your physical and mental health. Um, those things all contribute to your ability to study effectively. Um, and yeah, you know, it's going to be hard, you know, that's kind of just a way of, you know, balancing out the fact that there is going to be stress involved, but um, just practice, you know, you got to practice, um, 
in the environment, I think that'll help you out for sure. So to the pre-med students that are listening, right? They took their MCAT score, they submitted their application, yeah. and now like they heard back from the med school saying, you have been granted an interview. Yeah. So what are the steps or types of more preparation, I guess, that goes into interviewing or any advice that you would give to those that are entering in to their med school interviews? Yeah, so, you know, I was just thinking about, you know, my interview process and, you know, it's an extremely exciting moment to know that, you know, you're able to secure an interview and, you know, and it's a part of the process, you know, and I think one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of cliche to say it, but, you know, don't do too much. Right. So the fact that you have been granted this opportunity really speaks to the amount of work that you've already put in. And, you know, they really want to know who you are as a person. And, you know, it's an opportunity for you to look at that school or that place and determine if that's a place you could see yourself, you know, so it really does have to be, you know, coming from both sides. But, you know, I would say, you know, look for ways to, you know, be yourself, see if you can be comfortable around the people. I think, um, I think the people are what you will remember most about wherever you end up. So really kind of look around, see if this is, a, if, if it's the type of place where you're like, okay, I could, not only could I be here, but I could excel here. You know, I could be at my best. Um, and that's definitely something I remember about, you know, interviewing at Meharry. Um, it was kind of like, it was really very, very simple. It felt very natural. And, you know, that was a blessing to be honest. So then with um, taking it a step back a little bit, uh, yeah. let's say that there are people that are um, not looking to go straight into med school or may not have been in su successful in the different application cycles. I know it took me a few cycles just to get to dental school. So what advice would you give to those that are entering into gap years or do you recommend a gap year or what do you do during those gap years in between college and med school? Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you that that's a really important point to touch on. And I myself um, took a few years be in between college and undergrad. I actually took three years off. And, um, you know, you, you're trying to kind of figure out what your next steps are, you know, and it can be, you know, a little frustrating, it can be a little confusing. Um, but again, you know, I think um, just trying to come up with a plan, trying to figure out what areas can I, improve upon if it's something that you know if you look yourself you know look at your application and you're like hey there's areas that I can do things that would make me look like a better you know more complete applicant then you know you should definitely uh, use that as an opportunity um, more than anything so for myself um, the two things I guess I will point out that I did during my gap year is one I uh, worked as a medical scribe. And so that was an experience that really helped me and gave me a lot of um, direct uh, experience as far as um, I actually worked in an emergency room. And, you know, fast forward to now, I'm applying to be an emergency medicine doctor. So I guess, I guess something just worked out there. But um, yeah, um, my time as a medical scribe, though, was so valuable because, you know, you really have a chance to be in that environment and you're surrounded by it. So, you know, you start to learn things and pick up on things just by absorbing being around people. You're, it's kind of like being a sponge, you know, and things that you didn't realize were very important aspects of medicine, of delivering care, of communication, um, are all things that I felt like I was able to gain so much experience. And, you know, I was there for a few years. I was able to pick up a lot of different things um, from the different physicians I worked with. And, you know, by the time I did 
successfully get into medical school, I feel like so many of those things came back to be um, to be helpful, whether it's, you know, documentation and, you know, being able to type notes and understand how the business side of medicine works, but also just how to be um, compassionate, how to, you know, show people how, that you care, you know, with your actions and even during uncomfortable situations, you know, I think the emergency room definitely presents a lot of uncomfortable situations, um, but also a lot of opportunities to demonstrate um, that, you know, we're able to still, you know, give quality care even under um, stressful situations. So, so that was one thing I did was medical scribe that definitely helped me get a lot of that relevant experience that I took with me um, into medical school. Um, and the other thing I like to talk about, I uh, did I actually worked at Chipotle, none other than the Mexican grill. That's right. Um, and I remember I didn't work there that long. It was only about six months before I started medical school. But um, I remember, you know, there are things that I take away from every experience, I think, as you as far as like learning points or whatever. And for one, I did uh, learn how to uh, make guacamole. And so that was something that I still hold near and dear. Um, and I'm very proud of. Um, but as the prep person, which is what my job was, um, I learned a lot about the importance of preparation in general, right? And how to be successful means that you have a system, right? And so a lot of the things that I was required to do, you know, at first I would make mistakes or I would get confused or I, have, I would have to stop and go back and do things. Um, and it took a little bit of time for me to develop a way to understand the big picture, you know, how I could be successful the first time around, you know, and that's how you do things more officially is to be able to do it well, you know, but um, like, like anything else, you know, it took time, but um, you know, I was proud of my ability to learn something, even though it might seem simple as, you know, working in the food service industry or what have you, but um, you know, even though I, I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to, you know, maybe be there forever, but um, I still learned a lot of things. I think that that helped me out. So, well, I'm definitely gonna need that guacamole recipe. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, I'll uh, have to get back to you on that. You know? <laughs> but, um, but it's important that you touched on that because even in one of in my gap years, um, right out of college, you know, with a whole bachelor's degree. I was working in like a college gear retail store for a little bit. And it just shows like, you know, your interactions with people um, or just working with different types of people. And I know I'm using those same interpersonal skills with my patients that I have now. So it's good that you're able to, you know, use those skills during that time in your gap years at Chipotle, you know, to actually apply that to um, what you're doing now. So definitely, definitely. Yeah. You're right. Um, but also, you know, uh, talking about med school and your involvement and everything like yeah. that. I know that that's how we met. Actually, we served sure. on the pre-alumni board. I know. Um, Back in the were, day. That, <laughs> <laughs> making it sound, making it sound old. Right. It was only like a couple years ago. But um, you know, I served as the uh, school of dentistry member at large, and you served as the school of medicine member at large, and right. basically, you know, being that liaison or that student voice. Um, bringing that to our pre-alumni board at Meharry. So what else were you involved in at um, during your time in med school? And how do you think that that's helped you like become a better leader? Um, well, you know, I, de I definitely feel like, you know, leadership is definitely an important quality and, you know, one that I've continuously tried to develop and, and you know, actively um, look for, for areas where I can, you know, build on that and learn from other people who, who have done, you know, great things, you know, before me. Um, 
as far as, you know, being at Meharry, I think what I remember most is, you know, some of the opportunities I was able to be able to collaborate with, you know, like being on pre-alumni and even, you know, another event that I was able to be involved with the School of Dentistry, which was um, Oral Health Day, um, which took, you know, we did that a couple of years ago. And I just remember um, it took a lot of time to plan. You know, it was a very um, important that we were able to, um, you know, meet the deadlines and, and, you know, be able to communicate with different schools and things like that. But having my role um, as b- being in charge of, you know, or one of the people that helped to recruit the medical volunteers, um, you know, and fast forwarding to the actual day where, you know, you kind of have to manage all of the different obstacles that may come up or, you know, unexpected things or, you know, just still communicating and going all the way to the end. Um, I remember we took care of a lot of patients that day. And also, you know, it was um, very, very rewarding, you know, and, you know, satisfying feeling to know that the hard work was, you know, it, it, you know, it showed in terms of our ability to, um, to do that. So I definitely really um, enjoyed being a part of that and being able to collaborate, like I was saying. Um, I think another experience I think I like talking about is um, the Salt Wagon Clinic, which we have at Meharry, which um, is a medical clinic that serves, you know, mostly patients who, you know, are underinsured or have no insurance and it's a student run. Um, And myself, you know, I remember even starting as a first year and just kind of shadowing and being a part of the experience of um, learning how to interview patients and stuff. And now my role is a little more of a leader as far as, you know, helping young um, underclassmen be a part of it, but also working on my own skills and kind of being able to practice some of the things that, you know, help make you a better provider, you know? So um, definitely some great opportunities to, you know, that I've been able to be a part of um, kind of just trying to diversify my interests. And um, during even like the med school preparation process, you talked about, you know, taking care of like your physical and mental well-being. you know, how do you manage your work-life balance now as a med student with having all of these um, commitments on your plate? Uh, What do you do to make sure that you do your best <laughs> to keep yeah, a level head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's just that's just so important, right? And you know, it's something that you have to, I know for myself, um, I had to become a lot more self-aware, you know, a lot more understanding of how the different aspects of my being, how they're kind of connected, you know, and I think the ability to have the different areas of your life, you know, your physical health, mental health, you know, your spiritual health, how it all kind of works together to allow you to be at your best. So, you know, one of the things I am really proud of is, you know, having, you know, more discipline and being able to um, still, you know, exercise and, and do things like that, which keeps me, um, you know, well, for one, obviously it keeps you in good shape, but, you know, it releases, you know, stress and it's a, it's a good way to really exert yourself like positively. And, you know, that really helps you, you know, your mind is kind of, uh, clear, you know, afterwards. Um, I spent some time really becoming more interested in like meditation and things like that, like becoming more mindful, um, which, is I think very underappreciated because you know you know we don't slow down enough I think myself included you know it's so easy to be running around from you know different tasks to the next thing and um 
you know, having that balance, I think is helpful, you know, at finding a time to just be able to, um, you know, not even worry about the thoughts that you have, but just, you know, be mindful, you know, and just understand that, you know, you, that's part of, you know, being, being a human being, you know, things like that. Um, but yeah, I think overall, you know, I think I still find ways to, um, I'm a big believer in, you know, you work hard and you play hard, you know, so that's something that I try to be a, a big believer in, uh, in my actions, you know, I've been able to, you know, go on a couple of vacations and relax and, it's important, you know, you come back, you're able to refocus and, and remember, you know, why you have a purpose and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's so important to, you know, have a balance, you know, and I, I think for me, you know, it's something that, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of part of who I am at this point, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, it's kind of just become something that I do on a, on a daily basis. So then with switching gears to like the clinical aspects of things, yeah. um, like you guys have external rotations. So we, we do too. We have external rotations, but they're right. like very local, um, right. you know, or we go on like our mobile unit and do dentistry, um, like in rural areas of Tennessee, that may be like an hour, hour and a half away. Um, but you guys actually go like travel to different States and different cities mm -hmm. and things like that. Like what are external rotations like? Yeah, yeah. So you're right. You're right. Um, in terms of our rotations, right? So one of the opportunities that you get from coming to Meharry is that you will go to other hospitals that um, they're affiliated with. And because they have that affiliation, you can go and train and learn throughout your uh, rotations. And, you know, there is a core rotations that every um typically it's a, in your third year of medical school every student goes through and you know the goal of kind of going through the rotations is obviously you're trying to learn as you continue to become surrounded by patients and now you're learning how to do some of the things that are not or that are beyond just kind of um what you learn you know through you know your lectures and things like that you're starting to really put um, a lot of these things in the practice. And so, um, as far as, you know, going to other places, it really allows you, you know, I think the biggest thing it allows you to do is determine, you know, what it is that you like and don't like about, you know, what your interests are. And, you know, for me, my goal, you know, I kind of had an idea that I was interested in emergency medicine when I came in, but, I always felt like, you know, I want to keep an open mind. I want to always try to learn something throughout each rotation. And, you know, it is true, you know, you get out what you put in. So you can go through and learn as much as you want. Um, but you understanding that you are still a student. So there are going to be some limits. There are going to be some things that you can't, you know, completely, you know, be a part of as if you were a practicing physician. But what you can do is figure out what it is about medicine that you know you want to further interest yourself in and eventually you will have to select the specialty so you know i remember you know there were some rotations that i enjoy more than others you know there were some that you know i tried to be you know pretty you know I tried to learn something from every rotation, right? I think in overall, there's going to be some where you're kind of like, okay, this isn't really what I want to do, but I have a responsibility because I'm here and I'm going to do what I have to do kind of um, business as usual. But what you will also notice is there will be every so often, there'll be an experience that really you're drawn to and you're kind of like, I want to learn more about that, or I want to see how to take care of this if I was in that position. And um, I was fortunate enough to be able to have some rotations where I worked in the emergency room. And that really kind of solidified it for me where, you know, I was kind of like, um, I know it's really hectic, 
And I know it's got kind of crazy, uh, but there's also another aspect of being able to operate in this chaos and kind of know how to still um, be working towards the right goals, you know what I mean? And you get a lot of different types of patients that come to the emergency room. For myself, I think I'm kind of a, a person who has diverse interests. So I think it plays well for me that I ended up in that specialty. Um, but, but yeah, I think overall, yeah, your rotations are an opportunity for you to learn more about yourself. And it's okay if you don't like something, like it's okay to be like, hey, this isn't for me. And it's actually better that you do that before, you know, you have to actually choose because you will have to make a choice eventually. Yeah, you got to know what's a good fit and what's not. So I yeah, definitely get cool. I definitely get that a lot. So, um, <laughs> so then, you know, with being about to graduate, we're close to the finish line here. Yeah. Has your perception of medicine changed over these last four years? Like I know when I was a pre-dental student, I was like, oh, I can't wait to come in dental school and fix one mouth at a time and make everyone <laughs> smile. And it's like, there is so much more, like dentistry is yeah. so multi-layered. Like yeah. I can only imagine how your perception of medicine has changed over these last four years. Yeah, well, you know, it is important to, to reflect on, you know, each milestone and um, getting closer to being where, you know, I've you know, dreamt about this for, you know, over half my life, you know, and it's, um, it's nerve, nerve wracking a little, but also very exciting to know that, you know, your work and the things that you put in and um, the time and effort does uh, go, you know, for a, a purpose, you know, and I think now what I look at is the type of, um, you know, the type of mark that I feel like I want to leave as I navigate and go through the different stages of my life. And I think one of the biggest blessings for me is ending up at, you know, HBCU and ending up at Meharry um, and being able to be surrounded by so many, you know, uh, future Black professional, you know, medical professionals and, and seeing how, you know, we can all learn from each other, you know, kind of struggle together, but also you know, remember that we are built for this, you know, and we are deserving of this opportunity. And, you know, we are here for a reason. And so um, that's something that I can just take that to the bank and just, it is just such an under, understood aspect, you know, of being able to, to train here. But, you know, also, you know, I'm learning that, you know, life, you know, my life isn't only medicine, you know, and, you know, being able to have diverse interests, you know, I've said that, but also, you know, even as I get into my, my specialty and things like that, you know, always be looking for new challenges, you know, new things that can push you to better yourself and continue to um, add more things to your arsenal, you know, I think, um, that's something that for me, I, you know, I look at it as another opportunity to continue to grow. And, you know, I know I represent something greater than myself, you know, it's kind of a perspective that, you know, you got to remember that you are able to do a lot for people just by being there and being present and, you know, you know, doing your part. And, you know, I'm blessed that I've been able to make make it to this point and have the skill set that I have. So now, you know, you got to use your responsibility, you know, you have to use it wisely. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to finally have a skill set to where people are going to, you know, be needing what I can offer. Um, and yeah, I think continuing to build a network um, like the people that I met from the Harry, you know, all the, the dentists that I've been able to be around. Um, and even just, like I said, other um, health professionals, it's um, something that I know, you know, I could tap into. And, and even once we leave, you know, we're going to be uh, Meharians, you know, for life, you know? Yeah. And I'm excited for the both of us too, honestly, like this 
whole network here at Meharry, like it's oh. truly like a Mecca of like, you know, um, black healthcare professionals. So it's been a pleasure. Um, and before we close out, if this episode has helped you in any way, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that we can reach more viewers like you. So um, Julius, do you have any closing remarks for our guests? Um, well, you know, I guess, um, and you know, as far as social media goes, you know, if you want to follow me, um, on Instagram, it's just, uh, sir underscore juice three, three. So, uh, definitely feel free to follow me or, you know, if you have any questions, um, really thankful for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I know the, this podcast is going to continue to grow and I'm happy to be, uh, on here, at, um, at this point, you know. Well, that's all we have for today. So thank you for sitting with us at the table and remember to stay flossing and keep flossing. Bye guys.